Um, today's sermon is, as Brother Jeff read the scripture for it today, is um, the title of it is Love and Humility, and uh, I think I need to add a little forgiveness in there too with that. Um, we've been through a lot, and we're going we're gonna to start recovering today. Uh, the first first reading is is really about being humility and and I went, I went back to the Old Testament. One of my favorite verses in the Old Testament is Micah six and verse eight. And Micah six and verse eight says, "He hath showed the old man what is good, and what the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love in mercy and walk humbly with thy God." This is, this is sometimes easier said than done. And I don't know if I got that down right. I'm going to go back here and we're going to look that up a minute. Or I think I left a couple of things out there. I tell you, I've been busy. <laughs> ah, let's see here. Y'all bear with me just a moment. I want to read that from the Bible, from the Bible instead of what I wrote, wrote down. Let's see, Micah 6, verse 8. He hath showed thee, O men, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do, do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Did that did, did, just that, just that. And what doth the man require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Uh, it's not much more than that I can really add to, the, to that. God pretty well speaks that. Uh, I that's a pretty good commandment there in the, of the Old Testament. And to walk humbly. Now, what does it mean to walk humbly? What is it walking humbly? To be humble. To live your life in a manner that you want, want to do good, as it says here. And how do we do good? You know, the book of love says love is not boastful. It's not a gaudy look. It's not none of those things. It tells us what it is, though. It tells us that we should love one another. We should walk humbly. And when things don't go the way that we want them to go, or if we don't want to be humble, then it's, it's tough to be a Christian. Because humility is one of the main things that we have to have to be humble. To love. What is love? Well, the best definition I've heard in the Bible is love is, love is long-suffering. Love sometimes is not getting what you want, but you still love that particular situation that caused that. You're going to continue to love, and you're long-suffering. And in the forgiveness this morning, we looked at forgiveness. And how many times am I to forgive my brother? And for you, those of y'all that were Bible class, I appreciate you being there. But we're going to, list, we're going to say it one more time. There was a question asked to Jesus. How many times should I forgive my brother? S up to seven times? Jesus said no. Up to 70 times seven. So if we forgive 70 times 7, that's 490 times, and that's a lifetime of forgiveness to me. I think it's a lifetime, and I think that forgiveness should be at the forefront. You know, we can't, we can't always have what we want. Once again, in Bible class this morning, you know, the church is one body. Ephesians 4, verse 4 tells us that the church is one body, and we should all be of one mind, one goal, getting to heaven, all of us. Not just two or three of us, all of us. We all want to go to heaven. Anybody sitting in here this morning don't want to go to heaven? I didn't think so. If you didn't want to go to heaven, you wouldn't be here. But that's what the goal is. The church is one body. It's not one body with 100 different opinions or 50 different opinions. It's all of us one. We're here to worship God. We're here to love Jesus. We're here to love one another. The humility 
is the part and the forgiveness that has to come in, and love goes along with that. If we have humility and we have forgiveness, guess what we're going to have? We're going to have love. We're going to have love. We're going to have one body as God designed it to be and that, that he told us it should be in Ephesians 4 and verse 4, to be one body, one faith, one baptism. That one body is, is, is very important. And I know, you know, when you get, when you got, that's why, and I, I'm not going to get off on a tantrum on elders, but that's why God said that a church should have elders. And those elders are to make sure that that church is one body, that they are one body. So we don't have elders, but I tell you what we do got, we got some strong men. We got some strong-minded men around here. We got some men that want this church to function as it should. And I've seen plenty of examples of that this week. And next week, you know, these, these, there, there are, are sister congregations that has promised help to us. We're going to make out a schedule sometime this week of men that's willing to come and help preach, teach, serve in any way that they can. And without going too far, Warner's Chapel has promised anything we need. Brother File, Brother Mullis has been on the phone this week calling sister congregations, Broad Street, Lexington, Warner's Chapel. And they have all said that they'll do anything they can to help us. So rest assured, and that's one of the, th the reasons that I wanted to open the sermon with, with these statements, is to rest everybody assured. Everything under our power and, and all the guidance that the Lord gives us and the wisdom that he gives us is being done to make sure that there's always a congregation right here. And we're, we're, we're not going to... We're not going to let nothing happen to this church without a fight, and we're fighting a good fight right now. Okay. Let's move on in. A little bit more about humility. Um, we've got to turn over in your Bibles with me to uh, James 4. Is it James or is that Matthew? Y'all bear with me. Yeah, James 4 and verse, verse 10. Good old book of James. Okay. I love these old Bibles. The pages just flip. Turn so easy. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. I feel lifted up this week. I've, uh, I've, I have been inspired by the humbleness and the, the, the coming together of that. And if we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, he is going to lift us up. But we've got to do what he says. That's a commandment, I think. Sounds like he's wrote in a commandment in a commandment way. It's not, a, it's not a question, will you or will you, but it says to humble, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. That come out of his word. So that's got to be a commandment. And I, I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm, I, I'm really not, but it's been, I've been a member of this congregation for 39 years. My wife, my boys, and now my grandchildren. And we haven't always been humble, having humility. Hadn't always been that way, but it's gotten better. And now I, I, I think it's, I happen to think it's real good around here now. I really do. More especially after what I've seen this week. The things that we talked about.
Bible class and things, we are on the right track, folks. So I just want to set your mind at ease about that. We talked about forgiveness. Let's look at a little bit more about forgiveness. You know, forg forgiveness is sometimes the hardest thing in the world to do. But one time there was a little, little note up on the bulletin board out here, and it's, it's, it's not there anymore, but it said, and, and, and it was just like a little cut out of something that somebody had read. It said, if you want the last word in an argument, offer an apology. Yeah, if you apologize to somebody, if you stick your hand out to someone, especially your brother or your sister, and you say, I'm sorry, will you please forgive me? If that's a brother or a sister, you're going to take your hand and say, apology accepted, and probably going to offer an apology back, or they should. But that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard, hard thing to do. Let's turn back now to Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we'll begin in verse 9. And this is... This is right before the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to read through the Lord's Prayer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's really these last two verses here. Verses 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father, forgive your trespasses. Anybody, everybody familiar with the old saying in the Bible, you reap what you sow? Right there it is. So if we want forgiveness, if we want forgiveness, we've got to give it. We, can, we can't go through life. And, that, and I've run into people before, that always thinks they're right, they're going to be right, no matter what. If they have to turn something around that they've said, and I'm sure everybody's met people like that, if they have to turn around something that they said so that they don't have to say they were wrong or they done something wrong, they'll do that too. And then that just keeps going when you start that. When you start that, that's a, that's just, that becomes a pattern. And that's something else we talked about in Bible class this morning. That falls under practicing sin. You start practicing sin. So forgiveness. I forgive you, Bree. <laughs> forgiveness is, is the beginning of turning things around. And that's where we're at today. There's forgiveness, humility. It's time to, to, to stop worrying about who done what, who said what, and who did what. It's time to forgive it. It's time to leave that behind. So here we are, and a term that got real popular, right? At, and I, did, I didn't really like the term, but it got real popular right before I retired. And it's got, at the end of the day, we've got to come back tomorrow. I don't know if anybody's heard that one, but that makes a lot of sense. At the end of the day, we've got to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. 
And today we need we, we need to decide what what we're going to do. We've made some decisions this week, and I all I'm doing, I as Brother Don Atkins would say, I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I'm asking. I'm telling. I'm asking. I'm asking for myself, my family, and I'm asking for all of us. We have got to forget what's happened. We got to get in this book right here, and we got to if we're going if we're going to show up at church on Sunday morning, we're going to come to Wednesday night Bible class or Wednesday morning Bible class, Sunday afternoon service, and we're going to listen to the messages that are trying to be taught, the messages that people are asking you to do. And I don't think I don't, I don't think this is asking anything unreasonable. I'm just asking you what a Christian should do. It's it's not about me, y'all. It's about us. It's about everybody sitting in this auditorium this morning. Because, like I said earlier, if you didn't want to go to heaven, you wouldn't be sitting in this auditorium this morning. I'm sorry, I'm pointing. But if you if you don't want to go, ahead, go to heaven, then you're not sitting here. Because if you're going to come here, I don't, I, I'm not a preacher. There's no doubt about that. I am not a preacher. But I, I am a person that loves to share God's word. And I promise you anything I'm going to say, it's going to be scriptural. It's going to come out of this Bible. And that's where we need to look for answers, especially now. So let's 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 move on a little bit now. We've uh, you know the Lord's Prayer in those two two verses are that uh, we I'm gonna just sum it up and the best way I know how is to say that if you want forgiveness, you better give it. Because if you don't give it, ain't no need asking for it. Because our Lord's not going to give us, give it to us. If we don't give it, He's not going to give it to us. Okay, let's move on a little bit. I guess that's enough about that. Let's see. Let's talk about love a little bit. Let's go over to the good book of Second John and read the chapter of Second John. And later on, we'll be studying this a little bit. Uh, more on Wednesday mornings and Wednesday night, whatever the case may be. Second John, not got a lot in it, but it says mouthful. Second John. Let's go down to, to verses. We'll, we're going to read a good little bit here in uh, Second John. We're going to start out in verse 4. I, re I, regret, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I write a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. it says a lot right there about love, too. I think we've pretty well nailed down the forgiveness. And these, these, three, these three verses... Here, pretty much nailed down love. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. It's a commandment from God. And he says it was there from the beginning. There from the beginning. It's always been a commandment. And we've always known it. We've always said it. You know, I've had, I've had people this week, this very week, And I'm guilty too because I'm going to say I've never told them I love them. But I've had people this week tell me 
that they love me. And you, and you, and you know what? For those folks that have told me that this week, I won't say it right now. I love you too. I, I do. I truly do. And I appreciate that. I appreciate. I appreciate that. that those are the most beautiful. Think back to how you has how you felt the first time your husband or your wife that somebody said, "I love you." And you had that first opportunity to say back to them, I love you too. Think about that. What does that make you want to do? Made you want to spend the rest of most most of, made you want to spend the rest of your life with that person. And there's a lot of us in here that's been married a really long time. A long time. You know, it's it's there's a lot of bad four-letter words in the world. But the L-L-O-V-E, that's the greatest four-letter word that was ever admitted. So we have to walk with, we have to walk. And this is the love that we walk after his commandments. And should we walk in it? Should we walk in love? The Bible says we should walk in love. So that means we can should conduct ourselves as we love each other. And what 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 really does love mean? What's a, a good definition of love is meaning if you love somebody, to me, I'm right here. But if I love somebody, they're up here. They're way before me. And I've I've tried to live my life that way. I had I had employees that I had to have heart heart to heart talks with, and and you know, and I, I've I've had to dismiss some people from their livelihoods over the years. But that was my job, and I always tried to do it with the utmost respect to them and the utmost utmost love. But sometimes that can be a very emotional thing. But you have you have to dig deep. You have to reach down. And you got to put yourself on that side of the table and know what they're feeling, know what they're thinking. Even though they didn't do what was right at the place we were working, they didn't do what was right. They're still a human being, and they still deserve to be treated as one and to love them. Now, let's look on down here at chapter, chapter 7 and see that if you're not going to walk in it, if you're going to talk to talk, but not walk to walk. Let's look at, at, at what the Bible says about that. Warning against deceivers. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgathers us and bought us, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bideth him, biddeth him God speed, is a partaker of his evil deeds. So that's that. That's another pretty good warning right there. You know, we we got to be careful. We've got to be careful. We got to be careful with who we're associating with, with with what we say in front of these people. And it's one thing that I I want to talk to, especially our young people that that's here and listening. You know, we need to we need we need to listen to this. We need to think about one thing all the time even as we get older. And that's peer pressure. There's so much out there now. The internet. Instant grits. I mean, instant gram. You know, Snapchat. What, whatever it may be, there's so much out there. And in any time of the day, 24 day, hours a day, seven days a week, you can pick up your phone or turn on your TV or anything 
and you can find some kind of nastiness, some kind of drama, some kind of lying, the media, people trying to stir things up that just are not true. And there's so many people that listen to that. And God's word is where we need to go. When we see stuff like that and you wonder why people are doing that, if you study your Bible, you'll find out what they're doing that. Who's our old buddy that's always out there, that's always been here? And who, who is it that's trying to, trying to stir up trouble? Who has stirred up some trouble in our congregation here lately? Everybody knows the answer to that. It's old Satan. He's out there roaming. He's our adversary. I believe it's 1 Peter 5, verse 8 says, Our adversary, the devil, or Satan, old Satan, is out there or is a roaring lion, a roaring lion, seeing in whom he can devour. And he, he feels real good. He probably feels pretty good about what's happened here. But we sure hope going forward and after today, when he see he didn't close the doors on this congregation, maybe he's not going to feel so good anymore. And you know, I'm happy about that, and I want y'all to be happy about it. That's something to be, that's something to be happy about. And you know what? Wednesday morning, we're going to open doors. We're going to have our Wednesday morning Bible class again. And we're going to keep on. These men here is making sure that, that's working behind the scenes right now to make sure that that's going to happen. Okay, let's move on a little bit more here. So we talked about love. Let's talk about our walk with God just a little, or, or just a little bit here. You know, we're not, we got, we're not going to turn over to it because I'm sure everybody knows it. It's the story of Enoch. And that story he, he's mentioned in Genesis 5 and 24. Mr. Enoch. Now, he's, he's a man we could pattern our lives after. He done so good, and he walked so good with God that one day he was out walking and could you imagine this? And I'm sure it probably didn't happen like this, but could you you imagine just being out walking around or whatever Enoch was walking about, it says, in Genesis 5? And could you imagine just somebody walking up behind you, tapping you on the shoulder? And you turn around and look, and he says, I'm God, Enoch. I want you to walk with me. And we're going to heaven. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be wonderful? And boy, many times when I was working at Food Line, I just get off the corner and I'd say, God, how about coming and getting me? You know, but that wasn't the right, I don't guess that was the right thing to do, but I could pray a little bit and it, 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 it'd get a little bit better. It'd give you the strength and the endurance to keep going. And that's what we have prayer for. First Thessalonians 5, and I believe it's verse 17 says to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. You know, and we talk about the old devil out there being, out there working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he don't take no holidays off, he don't take no weekends off, or nothing that. But you know what? God don't neither. He's right there. He is right there any time we need him. If we just need to get in the closet or whatever and sit down and pray. He's right there for us. Then there was another instance of that, and it was Elijah. And I, for time's sake, we, man, I can't believe my time's almost up. We're going, uh, we're going to talk about Elijah here for for just a minute. And you know, he he was able to part the Jordan River, and God God took him too. And, and and Elijah was a, a devout man. He was a man of God. That story's in Second Kings, I believe it is. Second Kings, and I, I'm going to ask Don, is that right? Is it Second Kings? I believe it is. That uh, about Elijah and uh, his his uh, prophet companion, and I, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not even going to try. But he was there, and they, the Jordan River 
They smited in, and it was parted. I don't know if it was parted just like the Red Sea was, but they went through it. And they went on to heaven with him. So we're going to move on, because Mickey asked me if I could go 30 minutes when I told her I was preaching today. And I told her, I said, I just hope I'm going to be able to stop in 30 minutes. So I promise, I promise you I am, and I'm coming up on it. i got about four minutes. So let's turn back over now. To Matthew, Matthew chapter 18. And this, this will be our last scripture of the day. This is going to lead us into the invitation. And in chapter 18... The heading in my Bible, and I'm speaking from the old King James Version, it says, Jesus explains greatness. It's probably something you won't pay attention to. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a humbling statement. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. We uh, we've talked about a little bit about love, humility, forgiveness, and those are, th- are three things that'll never go away. Love, humility, and forgiveness. If you're a Christian and you want to walk a Christian life, and the things that have been outlined to do. are always given at this time at the close of our worship service and, and our sermon. If you want to hear, hear, if you've heard the gospel, you believe the gospel, and you make that great, great confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you repent, you have your repentance. And repentance, as everybody sitting here probably knows, is godly sorrow. That if I've hurt God, I need to repent for that. And if I'm not in his kingdom, if I'm not a child of God, then I need to repent of my sins and I need to turn away. Turn away from the world. The world is our biggest is our biggest adversary other than the devil. The world is because Satan is full. He 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 is overfed with the world. And the only way you can get out of that is turn to God. Turn to the church and be baptized. Be baptized and have your sins washed away by that blood that he purchased with his own with his own blood. He purchased this church with his own blood. That's Acts twenty twenty eight. And arise and walk in the newness of life, as Romans tells us. And then live faithfully. If you've done that and you think that you need some more forgiveness, then that repentance repentance is always there. That godly sorrow, that's always there too. You can come and say, I'm sorry, any time to God. And he is true and just to accept our apology and know that we're trying to repent and stop, stop practicing sin. Don't practice sin. So if there's anything or anyone that we can help you with this morning. Please do so as we stand and sing.